For your viewing pleasure, this broadcast of the Municipal Council Meeting of Alpena is made possible by the funding provided by the City of Alpena. Thank you for your generosity. Good evening and welcome to the Alpena City Council meeting of December 16, 2019. Call the order, please. Hess? Here. Johnson? Here. Nielsen? Here. Nowak? Here. And Walgra? Here. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, any modifications to the agenda this evening? <laughs> uh, approval of the minutes for regular session December 2nd, 2019. Any issues or changes? Mm -hmm. Citizens be appearing before council on agenda and non-agenda items are allowed five minutes each to address your concerns. This is the only time during this evening's meeting that you're allowed to address council. If you would like to do so, please come to the podium and state your name and address for our records. Hi, I'm Jim Pulaski. I'm the one that uh, wanted to have something done with the with bolt launch fee. Um, I guess I just wanted just to just to know that um, first off, this isn't only about fishermen. It's about other people that I've talked to that I got signatures from. Um, there was a lot of consensus that they felt that we should have a public, you know, boat launch where people can just use, even if it's just to take the kids for a boat ride. It isn't only about fishermen, this isn't only about me. Um, and I just feel too that um, for the money it would cost to maintain the launch behind you know, the post office, I think that the council could find the money in their budget to, to take care of it. And um, I guess I just want to be here tonight. If you have any questions, I'll be here. To, in case you have any. Yeah. I hope these two do the right thing. Very good. Thank, Thank you, Jim. Evening. Uh, my name is Don Kreinig, 311 East Baldwin Street. I'm here. We're here to ask the council to uh, consider rescinding a late fee for our summer taxes. What happened was there was a um, clerical error at the assessor's office in March that got our taxes sent to Wisner Street. We didn't get them till December. When we got them, there was a uh, interest that we had to pay, but the council has a, a fee on top of that, and we're asking if the council would consider waiving that fee for our taxes. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay, Don, have you discussed this with our city assessor to, to, mm -hmm. to take the necessary route to request that? Uh, no. Okay. Well, yeah, well, he, he has talked to me, I've uh, talked to Van and, and Anna has, I think, spoken with him. And basically, there's interest and penalty. The penalty is imposed by the city council. Probably would ask <coughs> Bill to uh, check to see, one, can the council waive that if they are so inclined. Uh, and then to do that would have to be at a separate meeting, like the next meeting. Okay. You know, on the but the uh, staff's six. aware of it. That's yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. So. We have spoken with okay. him, with him about this. Okay. And uh, I just wanted to make sure that this wasn't your only point of contact. Oh, okay. Nope. Yeah. I appreciate that. Okay. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So, so we'll we look for that. Thank you, Don. Look at it on the January sixth. Sure. Agenda. But, Anyone else? <laughs> Jesse, come. Uh, Jesse Osborne, 106 North 2nd Avenue. Um, I'm a citizen, however, tonight I'm coming to you as the Legislative Director for Representative Allard, specifically under your agenda item number 14A, the High Item Impact Resolution. Just wanted to share with you that the representative has gotten a lot of uh, comments, emails, phone calls into our office concerning this issue, uh, spanning the entire region, as have some of her colleagues on the lake here on Shoreline. And so she's actually leading an effort in the right <coughs> of drafting a letter uh, asking the governor to declare a state of emergency uh, for that shoreline. Uh, we're hoping the other representatives will join on to that. So I would just encourage that when you pass that resolution, if you do plan on sending it to our office, 
is make sure you send it to Governor Whitmer's office as well as the director of the Eagle. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Anyone else? All right, consent agenda this evening is A, bills to be allowed in the amount of $337,776.56. B is the council appointment of Rachel R. Smolinski to the Office of City Manager, effective Friday, December 20th, 2019 at 5 p.m. I move we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Huss? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Nielsen? Yes. Nowak? Yes. And Walgora? Aye. Right. Motion carried. Okay, presentation. Presentations this evening. <laughs> uh, first up is the recognition of annual employee award recipients for the Citywide Pride Program. This is my favorite time of the year. It's even better when I win. Just <laughs> <laughs> That's not a hint or anything. <laughs> Citywide Pride has been in place since 2000. It gave coworkers, citizens, and visitors the opportunity to recognize city employees. For a job well done basically going above and beyond what their job description says and what they're expected to do on a regular basis uh, we do this in december of every year and the mayor presents the awards to the staff for a job well done and i would also like to add that this year the fire or the police department excuse me the police department every single member of that department received a citywide pride slip that's the first time since i've been here in 10 years i'm super proud of them for that I would also like to recognize Joel's staff for making sure that they recognize their staff for going above and beyond and not just expecting that of them and understanding that sometimes people squeeze special moments and special jobs into their day. Um, I was going to count exactly how many we received because this year there were more than I remember receiving in the past and I did not get to that but I will just for your information in the future. So I will not steal your thunder mat and you can come out and start to start, uh, giving the awards out right. to everyone. And everybody is here except for one. Andy Marso is out of town at training. Okay. All right. Try to remember to skip his one as well. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's introduce these fine employees and then just stay up here with me when you come up, if you will, please. First up, we have Steve Schultz in recognition of outstanding commitment uh, to improving the working environment for employees at the city of Alpena by showing citywide pride throughout the year and he is with our administrative and engineering department. Congratulations, Stephen, thank you. Next up, we have Eric Hamp with the city police department. Thank you, Eric, appreciate it. And then we have Dave Cook from the, David Cook from the uh, Alpena City Police Department. David, Sorry. thank you. Rob Hamilton with the fire department. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate it. Greg Nowak with the uh, DPW. <coughs> Thank you. Jennifer Barrett with the uh, clerical department. Yeah, I'm gonna photo that. Bill's trying to get in there, but this is free advertisement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I also have another presentation that we didn't clerically add to the agenda, but just the same. Um, our Susan Nielsen is uh, at our last meeting with City Council this evening, so the uh, staff has prepared a nice plaque for her and her recognition and sincere appreciation for over 23 years of dedicated service to the City of Alpena Planning Commission and Municipal Council. And you'll remember that, um, that 
that council appointed Susan um, during some absent uh, vacant spots on the council, and uh, then she was reelected at least twice since then. So we've got this nice plaque for you, and certainly some recognition for your last meeting. And you wore your bear shirt today. <laughs> no, it's perfect. Yeah, don't get it on me. Thank you, Susan. So also, I guess last on the list of probably more like an announcement is uh, is the recognition of our new city manager who is up here. So this is uh, Rachel Smolinski is our new city manager that we mentioned in the consent agenda. This of course being Greg's last meeting um, ever. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> um, officially, it doesn't officially, mean I can't show up. <laughs> but uh, but we've, we've prepared more for him on his last day so not to steal the thunder of the citywide pride and, and Susan's Greg will have an official um, last day on at five, four o'clock on December 20th is his is yep. the memo I got that for his um, recognition for is basically a going away reception. I thought it was earlier. I thought it was. Is it really? Yeah, I thought it was. They told me 2.30. 2.30? 2.30 to four. Greg's knocking off earlier than I thought. <laughs> well, I'm, yes, I'm leaving. Why I'm off by five. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because we have reservations at uh, six, so okay. we got to be out of there. So verify the time on that, but I do know that it's December 20th because it's circled really ten times on my calendar. So I'm just kidding, Greg. But uh, so with that, I have to do that or I'll forget. <laughs> we'll continue on. So we have uh, for next up is report of officers is the council policy statement number 21 amendment. Um, yeah, back well last year actually, um, in as we uh, our assessor uh, Alan Berg. Uh, did some reviewing of our policies and that he, we did notice that our uh, this particular council uh, policy statement 21 on guidelines for poverty exemption was uh, grossly outdated by like some 10 years and so we had it updated and approved by council uh, also th with the uh, stipulation that it is updated every year because the uh, poverty uh, uh, income guidelines obviously change every year, so those need to also be uh, implemented, the new guidelines uh, for the coming year of uh, 2020. So what you have before you is the uh, those changes. They're in uh, uh, red. The, the changes at the beginning under statement of policy are basically what was stated before, but in one long sentence, and simply put in, in a little more easily read uh, format by listing them uh, A through G and we did add a couple that uh, Alan and, and the state recommends being in there that we had neglected previously so those are the only changes otherwise it's the same as it was but we do ask that the council approve this and we'll have to do this every December sounds good I didn't see any issues with the, with the amendment no questions Bill, this is a this is a policy. This is a council policy statement, so it doesn't get the first reading. It does not. No. Nope. No. This we can approve it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Anybody have any issues with it? Or I move we approve council policy statement number twenty-one. Second. Johnson. Yes. Nielsen. Yes. Nowak. Yes. Walgora. Aye. And Hess. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, next up is unfinished business fees for the boat launch behind the post office. John is here representing the committee. Uh, good evening and congratulations, man, on the victory this weekend. Navy finally beat on it. Doesn't yeah. happen that often. <laughs> and I'm sure you're, it'll be short. But I'm glad you recognize that it did happen. <laughs> did it? It did. Yeah. <laughs> I get to be my as I forget <laughs> Anyway, <clears throat> several months ago, Jim Pulaski, who just spoke to you uh, briefly at the beginning of the meeting, 
a city resident wrote a letter to the city staff and city council asking about the possibility of not charging for launching a boat behind the post office of the river lawn. He felt that the city could just charge out of city or county residents for launching their boats there, or it could be totally free. And um, anybody that didn't initially, that wasn't in the city or county, you know, would pay and everybody else would be free of charge. He said that parking is an issue there. We're painfully aware of that. It always has been. It's going to continue to be because it's a downtown parking lot. It wasn't specific for the boat launch. So a lot of other people use it. And many times when you go there to launch your boat, you're trying to park your vehicle with the trailer and you can't get a spot. Um, certain times of year when the fishing's really good, that's the first launch that opens. So a lot of times guys are just parking on the road. Council had asked city staff to look into this and the possibility of not charging the launch and the current boat launching fees in the city of Alpena at the River Launch and the Marina Launch are $50 a year for an annual sticker or $7 for a daily launch. They were increased from $35 and $5 several years ago to help cover expenses associated with the two boat launch sites and the fish cleaning station. The current operating contract with Thunder Bay Shores Marine, which is our third party operator in Fort Harbor, um, for the city marine allows them to retain the boat launch. The only exception to this in the contract is something that I had changed with their permission several years ago, which allowed the city to retain the uh, boat launch, annual boat launch passes that we sell at City Hall in the clerk's office, and the ones that are sold at Suez prior to them opening for the year, which is usually about um, well, early May, late April. Most of the money that the city gets the sales is generated in April and early May, a little bit in March before Thunder Bay Shores open for the season. Once they're open, most boaters simply buy the launch stickers from them. The cost of the city for printing envelopes and stickers for the year is between $850 and $1,200, and another few hours in time to distribute them and make the sales at City Hall. Money is generated from these sales to the city fluctuates between $2,200 in 2012 up to $4,000 last year. The largest factor attributing to the amount of sales done by the city is the boat launch in the river behind the post office. Boat launch stickers expire on March 31st, just like boat registrations and fishing licenses. And the river launch is always the first one to open each year because the ice in the river is gone before the ice melts at the marina. <coughs> Since the only place to purchase an annual launch sticker at that time here at City Hall or Suez, we sell quite a few. And as an example, so for this fiscal year, so far, uh, 1920, I've collected about $350 in bowl launch sticker sales. So I project 4000 So we're still looking to collect another $3,500. That's going to occur uh, this spring in March or April before the end of our fiscal year to hit the $4,000 mark. Uh, I bought Mr. Pulaski's request up to the Harbor Advisory Committee, and they were not in favor of waiving any fees at the River Boat Launch. They are keenly aware of the struggles the city has with managing and maintaining the marina with limited funds available. They felt that if boaters did not purchase the early seasonal stickers from the city because they did not need one to launch there, revenues would further decline. They also did not like the idea of only allowing city residents to launch for free as it would be very time consuming to try and sort that out of who's who at the site. If special stickers or passes were printed and distributed to city residents, they felt it would just add more time and expense to an already overstrapped budget at the city marina. So the consensus of the Harbor Advisory Committee was to leave the launch fees as they were. Another thing is uh, those, everything, everything at the marina is, is all kind of tied in. So the city scrapes together a few dollars wherever they can. The money, that, in essence, if we let people launch for free behind the post office, that we would be giving away, other than the part we collect early in the year, would belong to someone else. So, if, you know, it's in their contract. So I don't know exactly how much they make in the daily launch envelopes all through the summer, but that's their money, contractually. So I'm, I would assume we would have to probably replace that somehow. Uh, I did, when Jim was up talking too, he mentioned about having a place to launch a boat. For instance, you know, Rachel just getting on board and isn't 100% familiar with the city. We do have free launches at the fairgrounds and on 11th Street. 
that you, can, you, you can't access the big lake with those launches, but you can get in the whole river system up as far as the four mile dam. And uh, yeah, this is actually, I'm not asking for any kind of a motion or anything, this is just for information. Um, it's already in, in the fee schedule because it was put in there last year for this upcoming year. The next, the next time will be uh, as we start going through budget for um, 2021. And unless directed otherwise, I'm just going to leave things the way they are. How much, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, how much longer is on the contract with the current marina? This is, they're, they're going into their last year. So it, when's, their, when's their year end? I think it's this December. December. So we change it. We, they, we changed it a little bit for start stop dates, and it doesn't run consistent with our fiscal year because it's more calendar year. But I believe December. I believe so. Of 2020. Yeah. And then it's likely to become the city's. Um, we really make little off of it now. Uh, what, Twenty-five thousand is all we get, but we're responsible for all the major uh, uh, capital items, which usually tend to far exceed that twenty-five thousand, yeah, plus guess. the little bit we get on permits. Right. So um, the hope is that we're receiving all the revenues that it w will actually be better for the marina and for the city, but. Uh, I think just for at least my opinion as the outgoing manager is that uh, it's something we need to look long and hard at, but I think in the end it will probably make sense for the city to take over the marina. It's harder and harder to find people who are even interested in it uh, to begin with. Well, and I think it was around 2012 when I did an RFP, RFP for proposals to run the marina across the United States of America through my contacts with the Ports Collaborative, and I got three responses, and two of them wanted to know how much we would pay them, and the guys that are operating now. So, you know, marinas, right at this point in time anyway, uh, Northeastern Lake Huron aren't making a lot of money, and there's a lot of reasons for that. The decline of the auto industry, you know, the decline of the salmon fishery, smaller boats, the fishing culture has changed out there, it's all portable. Uh, trailerable boats and you know having to have a place to keep your boat for the whole summer it, you know and pay thousands of dollars for that is, is not as attractive as it was at one time you know the younger generation is more into having mobile things where they can be in Alpena one day and then they can be in Traverse City next week fishing over there riding their boat around and that's just the way it is and I can't absolutely guarantee you and I'm sure Rich will back me up on this we're going to have damage this year at the boat harbor we're going to have what? Damage. damage. Oh, well, yeah, from the winter. Yes, Along the whole expected. lakefront. So, you know, which of course isn't what we're talking about, the launch fees, but all, any money we get generated through the boat harbor, the boat launches, is all that pot of money that goes into the harbor fund. And, I mean, you, you can see they pulled the... Uh, newer floating docks, you know, along by the Yacht Club the other day, and you can see them laying up on the sidewalk now, that's what we do with them, and you can look at the pieces that are hanging down, those are all things that need to be fixed, and that's all because of the ice damage, the water being so high. The 18 fixed piers that we still have, some of those will not, probably will not be there. They're underwater, uh, we're running bubblers, it costs us a ton of money to try to keep docks that are basically worthless from freezing. To fix them, you know, we uh, Rich had put together um, just before I became harbor master. There was an existing grant from the DNR for five hundred thousand dollars to replace the docks on that side, but it had a match of two hundred and fifty ballpark from the city. And at that point in time, not only did we not have the money, council wasn't really that. Much. So there's a lot of things we're looking at differently. That the boat harbor, you know, changes possibly in operation, possibly in you know what all happens down there to try to garner interest from the, the new set, you know, the new citizens that live in Alpena now that would get more use out of that so it's not quite the drain on the uh, budget that it currently is. So is there any free access to the lake? No. You, are you talking about lake, the big lake? Mm -hmm. No. Not in the city of Alpena. But the other thing is when you get those grants, and Rich, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was around $45,000, I believe, that grant for 47 when, when they got the new launch dock, close by a dock bill. Didn't we tell them how we would maintain those things going forward 
to protect their investment, and we probably told the DNR that, hey, we charge money, and that's what we used to maintain the dock. Because, you know, the water levels are up and down. Sometimes the water levels will change, you know, a foot in a day, sometimes mm -hmm. two foot. It just depends on barometric pressure and which direction the wind's coming from. Mm -hmm. So sometimes DPW has to run down there, and they, they're constantly shifting those docks to make them usable, because all of a sudden it's underwater, then it's two feet above the water. So, you know, there, there's ongoing expenses even above just the maintenance of, of the docks. So, so, and you're talking about all of the docks, not just the one at the behind the post office. No, yeah, I'm talking about the launch docks at the boat at the boat harbor and the one behind. Those were all on the same ground. And I believe if you go up and down the coast, I mean, Roger City charges, everybody else, uh, Presque charges, uh, Harrisville charges. I mean, uh, the state doesn't provide any free launches either. You yeah, have to no, get the yeah, Presque is a state harbor, and, and it's. And they use the, the same monies that everybody else does, and then they charge as well. Um, and on my listserv uh, a few months ago, totally unrelated, it was simply a question came out of Grand Haven about boat launch fees uh, and what people were charging. And we were basically anybody who has a boat launch, for the most part, you know, they'll have some free ones here or there, but. Uh, most of the communities they do charge. <clears throat> Biggest problem they have on the west side right now is that many of them went underwater and became unusable. I know Grand Haven was really struggling, Muskegon, and some of the other communities on Lake Michigan where they were simply not usable. So right, but uh, that that's not really. No, yeah. it's irrelevant. Well, that's not not part of this. But I mean, it is a practice all along the lakes. Yeah. Um. Because as you say, it's it's not generating a ton of money, but but it does generate some funds that we don't ordinarily have. Four thousand dollars isn't a huge chunk of change in the grand scheme of things. But yeah. um, and I'm not completely opposed to. I'm a little concerned about the contract. I'm, not, I'm personally, I'm not incredibly concerned about the grant that was given to us ages ago because it was obviously nothing tied to it saying that we would have to consistently and forever charge people no, to maintain no, 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 no. Um, but the contract <coughs> the contract with our current um, <coughs> caretakers if you will might be a little bit more at least a little bit more affected than just <coughs> just the four thousand dollars depending on well if, if they want us to replace that money with it, yeah the hard part would be how, how much we talk like so what they're going to show on their budget just knowing from Path budgets is so boat launching fees to them, let's just say between nine and eleven thousand dollars a year. So, and then you've got the four thousand roughly that we want. So, we're looking at that amount of money. So, maybe next year they only get five thousand because no, you know, not only are people launching for free, they're, they're not buying stickers for them because now they can launch for free mm -hmm. and put up with the parking issues, you know, that go on over there. So, I mean, I'm just what if in it, but right. Um, and I guess just to just to reiterate some of the issues that we have are are that and this is just what I hear to not not only from Mr. Pulaski but from other boat harbor or boat launch <coughs> users is that we charge them fifty dollars annually, which to some of them isn't really an incredible amount and they don't have an issue with it, but they pay the fifty dollars and then they go to launch their boat over there and there's nowhere for them to park. Um, Sometimes it actually happens at the harbor, but not quite as often. Um, we have we have statements throughout in places that say that that boats have priority, that boat trailers have priority, but they really don't. It's a first come first serve. There is really no priority at all. If you don't get there and it's full of of cars for whatever reason, then they don't have a place to park. Well, at <laughs> the, the boat harbor, there are places for the boats to park. Right. At the, the problem is. There's so many people launching boats that there's times of the year that even though we've got 20 spaces down there just for boats and trailers, they're already full. Right, right. Most of the complaints I get and photos I get sent and things of that nature are are specifically behind the post office, right. um, which inclines me somewhat to 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 make it free because if it's free, then they're not paying for it, and so it truly is a first come first serve. And if there's you know. 
um, nowhere to park. You didn't you didn't pay for something you're not getting. Um, so there's so it's kind of a it's a it's more of a difficult decision than it seems on the surface for me at least anyhow. Plus you make it free over there, and then and then. It, if it's just citywide, then every city resident is going to be launching over there, and you're going to have a bigger issue with parking. And then if it, it, it and and then if you go completely free to anybody, then you're going to ha have even a bigger issue, and and even a bigger issue at the marina, because nobody's launching there, and everybody's launching there. True. Um, and those fees, obviously, like Don said, go towards not just maintaining that one single dock, but they go whether whether you whether we like it or not, it's like an extension of the marina. So. So you're talking about the docks at the marina, the everything you mentioned, the fish cleaning station, upkeep, and stuff like that. So everything a normal considered what the vast majority of people vote for. And not saying that everybody does, because sure, you're going to have quite a few people that just go out to tool around. I've done that myself. But um, so I don't know. I'll let you guys speak your mind. If they... okay, I have a couple of questions. Our fee structure, is it? in line with what most people charge in a community of our size. So what does Roger City charge? What yeah, Roger City's either right at us or look, we're a little lower, but they're coming up to what we charge. Okay. Um, it, it just depends, because it's not really based on the community side. It's, it's like it's, it's uh, supply and demand. So if you go down to our grades, you can pay 10 bucks to launch your boat. They won't sell you an annual sticker. They're just you're going to pay ten bucks every single day. There's no annual pass, and you're going to park about three quarters of a mile away. But they'll they've got people they've hired to give you rides and golf courts, and that's when the walleyes are down are running. So it's 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 different mm -hmm. all over. And then there's you know private marinas. We don't have any in our area, but as you go south on the lake, there are. And I don't have any idea what they charge. You know, maybe they charge five bucks to put your boat in. I don't know, and hope you buy some gas. From them. Okay. Well, I, I tend to um, kind of lean with the mayor on making it free um, behind the post office, but maybe there's a way that we can still bring in some funds at the marina and maybe a daily charge. Maybe they would make more on a well, we, Yeah, day we have day. daily charge already. But maybe not have the yearly fee and look at it as a daily charge, you know, if it's, let's say, five bucks to launch every time you put your boat out, um, maybe you could make more money that way. Because maybe somebody doesn't want to pay the 50 bucks a year, but they'll pay five dollars a couple times a year. Um, maybe there's a way to recap some of that money if we, if we decided to make the one behind the post office. Well, I can tell you from my experience, since you're asking, okay. people are more apt to not pay anything than they are to pay anything. But there's only so much room down there. So right, but but what but, but So if there's no room down there they'll go, hey, I'll go in for five bucks, I'll go launch down at the boat harbor today. Um, if they want to go fishing, they're gonna go fishing. That's exactly right. And the only question is are they gonna pay or not? We write the city police write a lot of tickets for people that don't pay. There's a lot of launch envelopes in there on the daily side that don't have anything in them. And by the time they find <laughs> out, there's nothing you can do about it. You know, people just tear it off, fill out the part that you stick on your windshield, and then put an empty envelope in there. And who monitors that? What well, resources do we right use now, police? Right now, no. Well, the police would have no idea if there's, because that money belongs to the marine operator. So whenever they go and empty out the envelopes, maybe every three days, depending on the usage, mm -hmm. that's when they find out. Okay. I think Joe wanted to make a point. I understand this is a complicated issue, and uh, but the one thing I just wanted to address here, sir, is that a comment was made about four thousand dollars is a drop in the bucket, and I guess in the scheme of things, I guess it could be seen that way. But and I don't want to speak for the other admin heads, department heads here, but I can tell you that four thousand dollars means a lot to us, and every budget year and all throughout the, the year, we as department heads watch every dollar we spend, every gas of dollar on every gas uh, gas and we buy we're watching as it goes up and down and every budget year when we're in session we're often asking can you trim 100 here can you take 500 here and that four thousand dollars will buy medical equipment for the fire department 
you know, buys cameras for our, for our officers. So in the scheme of things, I'd just like to point out, it is a big deal. So I just, for your consideration, so thank you for that. And don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to pit any body against each other. And again, I understand this, there are several issues to serve on both sides, very valid issues. But I just wanted to make that clear. Yeah, okay. Thank, thank you, you so Chief. Much. That was me that said that, so. Okay. Sorry about that. But the other revenues, you know, you were talking about, Cindy, with, um, you know, and I have looked at things like that, like charge for the fish. As a matter of fact, Ms. Blasky brought up the fact we'll just charge for fish cleaning station. I can absolutely guarantee you, because I know all the fish. Mm -hmm. And I know how many complain about because they have to pay. It's not very many. I know how many would be complaining if I said, you know what, if you want to use that fish cleaning station, it's 50 bucks a year. <coughs> because that thing, just the water usage <coughs> of that can hit eight grand mm -hmm. in a summer. So there's a lot of, you know, it, what, what happens is, is when we sit down and, you know, it's not quite like the household budget, right? You, you start dicing out pieces and pretty soon you got a big hole. And it, and it, get, it just gets, you know, kind of complicated. Where do, you make, where do you make up the funding? I mean, take aside the fact those guys, everything's in their contract for a year. I mean, if it was council wishes you want something to be free, I'm sure I can negotiate with them and somehow there's something amicable. Um, or we could cancel their contract in 60 days and take it over ourselves. You know, that's our option too. But it just, it's, it opens a can of worms. I, under, I understand Jim's reasoning for it. We've had a lot of discussions about it over the years. I got a lot of grief from the voters when I went from $35 to $50. But the main reason I did that was because through that contract with the operators, we print the sticker. We, we, all the expenses is borne by us, like Greg said. We're paying for all the maintenance. We're paying for all the water. We're paying for everything. And a lot of the maintenance, you know, it comes out of the maintenance budget. You wouldn't think about that maintenance budget used to be in the 30 to $30,000 when I first took that over. We're down around eight to 12 now because I negotiate to get things done. I mean, every time DPW goes down there, you know, our budget works. It's 65 bucks for that truck. It's this much per hour for the guy. It's this much for that backhoe. And all that equipment is what gets those docks ready for winter gets them ready for spring, all the while somebody else sits there and collects the money, that we get $25,000. What's up? Well, the other thing is, you know, if we said, well, let's lower the permit fees even at the marina down, they're, within their budget, they're looking at generating so much in revenue off of those permits. Well, if they don't get it, I'm not saying what they would do, because I don't know, but they could conceivably say, well, you have now, on your own, lowered our revenue. Therefore, the twenty-five thousand. Maybe we only give you twenty thousand or fifteen thousand because that's all part of what we need. And when we negotiated the contract of what we need, and now you have taken that away from us. Uh, you know, yeah, we got one year. Uh, uh, my thing is, if if you decide you want to do this, we move it. It's already set in the current budget that that money is there, and it's not collected until the spring. So the budget started in July, but the money doesn't come in until March, April, maybe some in May. So you'd really almost be looking at the next budget of 2021, and then any reduction or elimination would not occur until the spring of 21, because that's when they are collected in, in that anyways. So for the most part. And by then we would either have renewed, which is doubtful, the contract or, or with the we current, are, or we would be probably more than likely taking it over as DVW source. Right. I, and it, and, and the, one of the points that Jim made in his letter, I, I keep kind of going back to, is that we provide a lot of recreational things to both our residents and our visitors that are that are zero cost, whether it be the splash pad or the beach or the going to the band show for numerous concerts. And granted, the bands are paid for by by whoever is True North or whoever's doing the. Um, but 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 to be there, um, we maintain it. We maintain the lawn. We maintain public bathrooms when we had them. Um, well, and Porta Johns. I mean, we do all of this for a lot of different recreations in the city but not that one. Um, and so he's made a point and, and it's, 
You know, it's Matt, a valid that, point. I mean, we want everything to be free. I just want to make sure that what that 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 what we're that that we can't that we can't do this. Right. I and I and I actually broached it that way with the Harbor Advisory, and they're a bunch of fishermen and sailboat guys, right? There, they wouldn't be on the committee. Um, you know, I use that very example of the splash park, and you know, the free movies sometimes, free theater on the bay, all the stuff that goes on, and they just said, yeah, and all you need to do is walk down. There. But now we're talking about something that in order to do it, you've already made an investment in a specialized piece of equipment. That's just how they looked at it. So then they, you know, so what's next? So, okay, so I got this big $200,000 boat. Well, why should I have to pay to keep it at the boat harbor? Why shouldn't I just be able to park it there for free? I mean, you're buying electricity for the band that fills radio stations. I mean, I'm just telling you what some of the conversations, I didn't write it all down because no, it's fine. pages, but. So there's a lot, you know, a lot of ways to look at it. Well, and that was kind of how they looked. At it. And when we used to have the Michigan was ice you know, people were charged. You know, you went skating there, you played hockey there, you did uh, figure skating, speed skating, anything inside there. It was you paid for it. Uh, didn't necessarily cover all the costs because I know we were subsidizing uh, forty thousand or so dollars, but there were fees to use those facilities. Uh, and you know the ice arena much of it was done with grant money uh, from the DNR uh, so you know we get grants for a lot of different things uh, but there are uh, certain facilities that have tended generally to be ones where fees have been charged in the past and the county does it right now with the ice arena that we currently have it's their facility, they control it, but it's, there are fees. You don't go in there without paying and use it, other than the walking track. And they talked about putting a fee on that, but then they backed off. <coughs> Anyone else got an opinion on that or questions for Don? No. That's everything I asked. I wanted to make sure that my things were that we were, if we were in line or out of line with the facilities, right. you know, it's free all the way around us. And it doesn't sound like it is, and, and I did have a question on the waterways grant. You know, if it was something that was put in that when you received that grant, but we're not concerned yeah. with that. So um, you've answered everything that, that I have. Okay, the point that you brought up that we have so many other recreation opportunities that we don't charge for, and voters already have to pay a license for their boat on top of it, where we kind of sort of go to the beach. You don't have to even have that, so it's kind of. In some ways, it's unfortunate that there's no way to access our water when we're on the water without having to pay every time or a fee that may be prohibitive for some people. They have a boat, they may want to fish, they may want to catch food for their families, and to not be able to access the lake when we're on the lake is seems unfortunate to me. So I would like to see if there is a way we can do it. But I see that right now, the way it's structured, it may not work this year, but maybe there's a way we could work it into and I'm going to assume that nothing on the pa nothing on the pat it's a decal nothing on the decal that we sell so it's a decal you put in your window the fifty dollar one the fifth that sticks right on the boat trailer that's on the boat trailer boat trailer anything on that decal tie it to the owner if you called City Hall to the clerk's office and asked them to look in the file cabinet and pull out the application they filled out. Yeah, okay. but you might, you wouldn't be able to. That's only during our working hours, and that's only the ones that we sell, and they sell more than we do. So you'd have all theirs. That and I'd be honest with you, did they go? I mean, I give them all the registration forms and tell them here's what you got to fill out. Do they do that? I don't know. And well, all I get at the end of the year is here's how many we sold. We get a true up. We get the old stickers back. Because the reason I ask is that it doesn't seem like it would be that consuming to, to, if you were to, if, if we were to have it, if it was free for residents of the city, it would be you simply bring your tax bill or something to when you, when you bought the decal, and they would give it to you at a reduced price or free or reduced price, mm -hmm. but then you'd have the same decal. Nobody know the difference anyway. Then. Right. Then at the site, it wouldn't matter because right. you would still have the decal. Or you could save the money on those details, just have when Joel's guys are writing those tickets, they could just run it all through the lean. Just kidding. Mm -hmm. I like the other <laughs> <laughs> um, All right. 
Yeah, so that's a possibility. Yeah. yeah. But but then, I mean, you have the, because my mind works the way it does, you always have the possibility that somebody comes in and buys, because they're a city resident, they buy one for somebody else, because there's, there's no tie to, the, to that. Right. Well, one, one thing we do is, like, some people have, you know, like, it used to be unlimited, but I've cut it back to two, but, you know, some people have two bolts. So when they come in, we'll give them two stickers for the same 50 bucks because common sense tells me they're probably using one bolt at a time and not both of them. Right. It used to be there was people doing it with three or four bolts, so I knew darn well they were probably getting one for their buddies or whatever. Yeah. And once it, that's all you look at. I mean, boom, is that the sticker? Is that the right here? Yep, good to go. If not, then you get a ticket on your one shoot. All right. Well, we hash that one out pretty good. <coughs> Did we? <laughs> well, and then, you know, um, we'll, I'll be meeting with Harbor Advisor again in the spring. We're probably pretty much done for the next two months. But um, I can just say that, you know, council wishes to look if there's some way to, to do it free for city residents, for example, and use that idea you just had, Matt, if, you know, and that's something they may be willing to do. I mean, maybe at the end of this year, I'll take a look at the list and look at the address and see, okay, how many people on, because a lot of them are buying those stickers. They're from Tawas, they're from out Hillman, you know, from out of, out of town. How many of them are city residents and have a better um, idea of the effect of, of the cost? Would be? Yeah. Do either of the operators sit in on your meetings as well? Yes, every one of them. Every one of them? Okay. The, the other thing that you could do is we can look at the options, but if we, we looked at if you were going to implement, it would be in the spring of 21 would be the best, right. the cleanest way to do it is it is conceivable by them. It may be falling under our budget, and then we can look at the whole picture in terms of revenue expenses that we project and how does this fit in. It may be that that's very workable, or maybe that, no, we don't want to go there. For, you know, budgetary reasons, whatever. Uh, but that would be a good time to be looking at it, is if and probably more likely when that transition occurs. Okay. But then I'll do my part fast, because, you know, I'm not going to be around forever. <laughs> we all said. Yeah. All right. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tom. I guess got a recommendation for action on that. No, tabled until further discussion. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Let's table it. I move we table it until further until a further date. Okay. Second. Nielsen? Yes. Noak? Yes. Logar? Okay. Hess? Yes. And Johnson? Yes. Motion carried. Next up, new business, the high water impact resolution. Communities around the state are submitting resolutions requesting the state of Michigan, <coughs> excuse me, along with the state legislature to declare, declare the shoreline of the state of Michigan as a disaster area. This would allow the state of Michigan to seek assistance from Congress and the President of the United States to repair damage occurring to coastal communities. I have prepared the attached resolution for consideration by the Alpena City Council supporting the request, supporting and requesting the State of Michigan to make the appropriate disaster area declaration. Uh, Roger City, I believe this was on their last council meeting, a uh, very similar resolution. Pentwater has, has passed this and now there are a number of other communities that have. Um, we did tracks our damage for a while. We found out that you know we talked to the insurance company and like all insurance companies, they say no, we're not paying. It's not our <coughs> responsibility. So as of mid-September, we already spent uh, about twelve thousand dollars just in storm-related damage. Um, since that time, we've been down. We've continued to go down, broom the sand off the off, uh, Starlight Beach walkway. Uh, we 
been at uh, putting stone in at Starlight Beach and trying to clean up uh, the debris that washes up beyond the sidewalk line. I've got sidewalk damage out. And I haven't purposely did not go in there and repair a lot of these damage because I'm just about guaranteed that uh, throughout the winter if we're going to see more significant damage. Last week, I got an email from or a text from Sean McNamara, the one light pole at the at the volleyball courts. He says, "There's erosion around it." <clears throat> Ten minutes later, he texted me, te te <coughs> "It's down." Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I mean, it's just going to keep eating away. Um, you know, we've we've looked at what we can do to try to protect our infrastructure. Yeah, the, the, the DEQ or EGLE has indicated that they are uh, expediting permits. They've shifted a bunch of people over to expedite permits for uh, emergency repairs, but it's still the cost associated with, with, with repairing that. You know, we don't know what we're going to see, to be very honest with you. I pulled up today, I, I pulled up the uh, Army Corps of Engineers projections for the lake levels. And they, they're predicting water levels could be um, eight inches higher next year um, over what we we saw this year. Um, you know, it, obviously there's a range. It could, it could be a lot less, it could be a lot more, but that, that's the max that they're predicting right now. So we know we're going to have ongoing issues. This is, this is just a resolution asking the governor and the legislature to support us in trying to accommodate that because we're not going to get any help from the insurance companies. We're, you know, we have costs. You know, the $12,000, I was telling Greg this today, the $12,000, that's just labor and equipment and some, some materials, some stone materials. It doesn't include buying a new broom from the front of the of the trackless because we burned that broom up. Keep you know brushing the sand off off the sidewalk. And we've been down there with a loader uh, running running that down through there to try to push the sand back and put it out on the beach. You know, Greg commented today about the, the, the ice piles out there. I said, double edged sword. They may help us, you know, because they're out far enough, you know, quite a ways out. But if they get pushed in, just think of that mass coming in. You're not gonna, you're not gonna stop that mass of concrete when it gets pushed by the wind and the wave action. So, like I said, I, I'm, I'm very pessimistic about what I anticipate from to see in the spring. And okay. Blair Street Pier could be very vulnerable with the high water and then the ice and winds. Uh, so. You know what? How that will fare through the winter is a question mark as well. And just the twelve thousand dollars that I didn't have a line item for storm damage, so we're eating away at our at our parks and rec maintenance line item. Right. Okay. <coughs> All right, um, Bill. You want me to read this whole um, resolution? Is that required? No. <laughs> it's not extremely long, but it basically just says what Rich said it says. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll, unless someone insists, we'll forego the, uh, the actual reading. Everyone had it over the weekend. Uh, staff has that, or um, media has access to it as well if they would like. So I entertain a motion to it. I move we approve resolution 2019-18. Second. Nowak? Yes. Balgora? Aye. Haas? Yes. Johnson? Yes. And Nielsen? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Next up is the first reading of Ordinance 19452, Annual Report to Council for the Retirement System. Are you? Uh, I'm going to read, yes. <laughs> um, essentially, just a, a little bit of background. There was. Um, there was a question posed oh, a month or so ago, maybe two months ago, about why are we 
why do we have our CAFR on one date and our actuarial valuation on the other? And that it would make more sense if we line those up because a lot of the information that's being given is we're compiling it twice a year. So the thought was, well, is there any legal impediment to making the report to about the retirement system assets to, uh, ending on the fiscal year instead of the calendar year? Uh, and so the ordinance always said calendar year. Now, I tried to research why we did it calendar year way back when, but uh, it's been so long and it's been done that way, there's really no available information on it. But so it was run by, um, you know, Phil Straley. Uh, it was run by Louise run by me. Uh, we did present this to the retirement board last Thursday who did recommend um, that there be a change to it. So that's what this is about. So this is ordinance number 19-452. It's an ordinance of the City of Alpena, Michigan amending Chapter 62 Personnel Article 3 Retirement System Division 1 generally by amending Section 62-136. 62-136 annual report to the council. The board of trustees shall render a report to the council on or before December 31st of each year, showing the fiscal condition of the retirement system for the year ended the preceding June 30th. The board shall also render an actuarial evaluation of the system's assets and liabilities on or before June 30th, showing the financial condition of the retirement system for the preceding fiscal year. And the provisions of this ordinance shall take effect 10 days after being adopted by the municipal council and duly published. So this isn't an additional actuary, actuarial no. evaluation. Okay. So the change is it's just, just a, the same one that we always had. It's just a different time. Yeah. yeah. The timing is different. Yeah. We're supposed to act like I did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, um, our There's last no actuary. Yeah. No, and it actually might save us some money if we only have to report numbers once a year. Um, so right now, our last uh, pension valuation was done on December 31st of 18. So that leaves six months until our, um, our financial statements end on June 30th of 19. Um, but now that we're gonna move it back. So it's gonna be a full year in between. But um, in speaking with Louise, she said that this is actually very common and it's called a roll forward. Um, so I think it's just gonna be easier and even the, um, the auditors think it will be, it'll be more efficient as well too for them. Because there's times where we're waiting, they're waiting on information from Louise, and this might just help speed up that process. Okay, awesome. Any other questions about that? All right, let's start the second reading uh, for January. January, January 6th, next year. Yeah. Thank you, Bill and Anna. Next up is the raw water intake repairs bid, Rich. On October 29, 2019, the city received and opened proposals for the 2019 raw water intake repairs. The work encompasses the following. Intake crib repair, intake cleaning and zebra mussel removal, inspection and data collection of the existing intake pipe, and shore well pipe repair. The, 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 I'll just back up for a second. The cribs, we have an inner, we have an inner crib and an outer crib we have um, water sources, or that's our water source for the water plant. The outer crib is about 2,000 feet, it's about 15 feet of, of water. And the front slope, it was built out of wooden cribbing and then filled full of stone. Well, the front of it has, has failed. It's, it's sections of it are missing. And the stone has, has dislodged. What we need to do is go in there and rebuild that front wall of the crib and then replace that stone that has sloughed out of that area. Um, so that, that's a major part of it. Uh, we've, got, we've got videos which were included as part of the uh, RFP. We had uh, the uh, Alpena Diving Service, they go out every year they put, take the covers off in the fall, and put the covers on in the spring of those two intake ports um, for winter, winter flows and, and summer flows. Then we had them do a video inspection of that and identify what damage was done. And we included those, all that information along uh, on the RFP that he sent out. 
Three bids were received as follows. North, Northern Divers on Spring Grove, Illinois, no bid on the intake repair uh, for inspection of the intake line, that 2,000 feet of, uh, of pipe is $23,740. Solomon Corporation out of Monroe, Michigan, uh, they only offered to come up and uh, for $3,800 to $4,800 per day just to review <coughs> the conditions of the, the short wall and the pipe and then they would give us a proposal, which is not what we asked for. The Alpena Dive Service gave us a price of $65,955 to facilitate the intake repairs and no bid on the inspection. Upon review of the bids, the recommendation of the water treatment plant personnel is my recommendation to City Engineer that City Council split the award of the 2019 raw water intake repairs. It's my recommendation to award the intake and shore well repairs as well as the cleaning to Alpena Dive Service in the amount of $65,955. Alpena Dive Service has performed work at the water treatment plant on various projects since 1996. With water treatment staff satisfied by the work performed in a professional way it was completed. The company's proposed repair is similar to a repair they made to the, on the inner crib in 1996. To date, this repair is held with no issues. I also recommend awarding the inspection to Northern Divers in the amount of $23,740. This inspection will allow staff to review the current condition of the existing intake pipe, decide if needed, any repairs that are warranted. In the event that additional work or cleaning is warranted, this company will credit the full amount of this contract towards the cost of the additional work. And the city has $100,000. Well, basically, that the pipe, there's a 40-inch concrete pipe that goes out to those intakes. Uh, we had issues uh, back in 96, and they came in and they put a 30-inch sleeve inside of that 40-inch pipe and then grouted it up. What, what they're saying is quite common, or what uh, uh, Northern Divers said that it's very, it's quite common, for them, quite common for them when they get in there and they ROV that line, that they'll find that that pipe is, is fairly constricted just by the debris and, and, and materials that get into that line. Um, one of the things, one of the side benefits, and, and of course you know, this could be a sales pitch, but we've, we've talked to them on a number of occasions, that with getting that pipe cleaned out so that you have that full 30 inch flow, that we may not have some of the issues that we've experienced in the past. A couple times over the past winters, we've had, we call it frazzle ice, it's that real, just slushy ice that, that gets on the lake. They will actually plug the intake. We have to go through and we have to shut the production plant down, back flush that line to try to push that ice out. Uh, and at least that's, you know, other places that have experienced that when they clean these lines out, they don't have that issue anymore. Um, the, there's one comment in there that they will credit it. Basically what they said is they'll come up, they'll do this inspection for $23,740. If we elect in the near future to have them come up and clean that pipe out, that they would give, they would credit that $23,740 towards any costs associated with cleaning that pipe out. This is something that <coughs> was identified in our sanitary survey that the state of Michigan does uh, at our water plant is an action item that we should be pursuing. It's not, you know, they didn't come out and mandate it, you have to do this, but they said, you know, you really need to get your shore well fixed uh, and you should look at the condition of that pipe. So that's kind of where we headed with this. Uh, at least we did put $100,000 aside in the, in the water budget for this work. And with these two, we're going to be below that hundred thousand dollars. On the inspection part, if they inspect it and they find that it needs to be clean 
and you, you guys agree with that, how will this going towards that affect bidding that out to other competitors that might want to? That 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 would be the that would be the trade off. We can still bid it out, but they're going to have that potential twenty three thousand dollar credit as an advantage for them. Okay. And that's that's okay. I don't know. We don't get that very often. That's why I was asking. I don't know if that's some kind of unfair comp competitive thing in a. No, because then we would make that video available to anybody that's bidding. They could all view that that yeah. tape and that recommendation. Right, because that, that'll belong to us, I would assume. Right. right. But just the fact that they'll have a $23,000 advantage over anybody else. But, but I guess anybody have, else would have had the... Had the they had to expend the, that money the themselves. They're, well. they're having somebody else do it. They're getting access to that video to see what it is. Yeah. So the actual cost... You know, it, it shouldn't affect it that much. And I don't know how many places out there have the capability of doing that cleaning. I ask, how the heck do they clean that? Do they put a giant rotor to it? Uh, or, no. or what do they do it for a, what is that, a 30 inch pipe yes, <laughs> to, it, it, to it, clean it? At least this company I actually heard about it. Uh, when Mike Collins, our water plant superintendent, went to one of the conferences, went to his annual conference on. Uh, for operators, this company was there and was telling him about their services, and he knew that we had this coming up, so he got all the information he could. We submitted it um, to eight different companies that we were aware of that did this type of work and, and got the experience. And I'm, a, I mean, it's probably <coughs> maybe considered a stupid question, but our our camera obviously. Is limited because it won't go that far. Yeah, we we can't go anywhere near that. They're going to have to have a thousand foot run on their ROV cable to be able to run from intake to intake or intake to plant. Okay. Because we have a we have a camera, right? Or do yeah. we lease that from? No, we we have a, a camera that we bought. I don't know if we want <coughs> a sewer camera down the water intake. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for letting Rich point that out. You're welcome. <laughs> we'll scrub it first. <laughs> Put it through a car wash. Yeah, and the, the work in the shore well is basically, um, while it's filled, it will go down as a diaper in the shore well and, and uh, repair the there's a, a spigot out there that needs to be replaced. Okay. So. Excellent. I don't have any other questions. Mm -hmm. No other questions because you consider this and it's like everything's underwater, so any kind of repair, you know, all the equipment and stuff that you have to bring out and the limited time that you have to do the repairs, I mean, it didn't sound too out of line. No, it, it all has to be done from a barge. Uh, but uh, Lee Barn help uh, helping to dive service. Is, you know, has the, the equipment to do it, but you still got to get out there. Somebody's got a handy an eighty pound sack of concrete, and he's got to horse it into place while he's trying to swim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not me. Yeah, <laughs> not swim overshoes that we need. No other questions, I have, sir. <coughs> I move we approve the bid from Alpena Dive Service for the repairs and cleaning in the amount of sixty-five thousand nine fifty-five. Second. Malagora. Aye. Hess. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Nielsen. Yes. And Noak. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Next up is the council compensation. Um, well, we need, no, we also sorry, need for the uh, inspection. Oh, there were two. I'm sorry. I was, sorry. I, was sorry. I was reading my notes. Yep. Uh, I move uh, we award the inspection service to Northern Divers in the amount of twenty three thousand seven forty. Second. Hess. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Nielsen. Yes. Noah. Yes. And Walgora. Aye. Motion carried. Aye. Thank you. Next up is the council compensation recommendation. Everyone is here from the compensation committee, so apparently I'm taking the helm on that. <clears throat> so we had a memo from their minutes of uh, the compensation committee. 
um, and their recommendation uh, towards the end on their action items is the wage for the mayor. The committee recommends that the wage for the mayor remain the same for the next two years. Um, motion was passed unanimously and the wage for council, the committee recommends that the wage for council members remain the same for the next two years and that also passed unanimously. Um, I will start, I don't know if anybody else has any other comments about the minutes from the meeting. Um, I do. Um, and it's probably something that we should, council should seriously uh, consider uh, what we're going to do here with this. But they make um, some reference to some of their discussion, which I thought personally was um, really not part of what I would have expected the compensation committee to be discussing during their official meeting. Um, some of our uh, decisions that council has made and some of the financial issues that the council has really doesn't seem, again, in my own opinion, uh, that it should reflect uh, the compensation committee's recommendation for my salary. Um, so, so I have a bit of an issue with that, but that it also goes into a note here. Um, they've, re they've reviewed comparative data, which I would expect them to do. Uh, noted the city is the second highest paid of comparable data. Um, they made an actual pretty decent report uh, several years ago about comparative data and how they found that data. Um, I'm not really sure what they used this year. They didn't know that, but that's fine. Um, but they also request that the city staff provide us with language that defines the committee's responsibility and authority. Um, I found that a bit unnerving, um, being that they asked that at the same meeting that they made their decision at. Um, so, so it's going to be my recommendation that we, um, that we ask, because we, we're not allowed to have direct contact with this committee, uh, that we ask either Bill or Anna to, um, to request that the committee meet again and provide us with their recommendation for how what defines the committee's responsibilities and authority. I don't think that that's my position to do that, to tell them how they should determine my salary. I don't mind approving it if they run something <coughs> by us, um, but I think the first step would be to ask them. We currently have uh, members on that committee that have been there since 2006 and 2016. Um, and so those two, at the minimum, have been there long enough to have gone through this process every two years. So they should have some, some idea as to what their responsibility and authority is. Their authority is pretty simple, um, that they recommend the wages for us. Um, but their uh, responsibility and how they go about doing that, really, I don't think is my responsibility to tell them how to do that. So. Um, but again, I, I don't have an issue with their recommendation, and I, I personally plan on approving it um, to remind council and perhaps anybody else is that the way this process works is that they make the recommendation to us, and there is no, there is no back and forth here. We don't have any contact with them, and we can't negotiate with them. We either accept what they've offered us or we don't. Um, <coughs> And I've been on here where we did, and I've been on here when we don't. Um, and so, so personally, I don't have an issue. My salary is fine. It's, it's comparable. It's sufficient. Um, I just have a little bit of an issue of what their what their conversation was and how they determined that. And so perhaps we can send this back to them for some definition as to how they meet. And there's also um, for the there's also a, a question as to the residency of some of the, at least one of the um, board members that they are required by our website to be residents, voting, registered voting residents of the city of Alpena. Um, so we'll kind of look into all of that at the same time. Um, plus there's a, a vacant seat already on that board. So um, again, I don't have an issue with voting tonight on this, and I've already said how I'm going to, um, but I would like to define who, who who is supposed to have contact with them and Bill you might know uh, I have contact with them 
Go um, ahead, I'm sorry. Um, the things that I did provide to them for their use in their analysis is um, the historical uh, wages that council members have been paid, also their meeting attendance, um, and uh, Greg had come across something on his listserv of the same subject and printed out and this is they mentioned that we're the second highest we're actually the third according to that list and um, even that is uh, somewhat questionable it was done on a listserv <coughs> and most of the respondents were villages or townships and you know where they're paying $25 a meeting whatever they're much smaller very different there were not as many cities that responded. So, you know, it, I don't think it was a real accurate, it was just something I passed on to Anna. Yeah, I also uh, did um, my own research a few months back because um, Joanne Gallagher had reached out and requested that information. And um, I looked up the, I looked up 10 cities that were comparable in size to Alpena and reached out to them to get their compensation. So I passed that along to them as well. Okay. And also just another note, um, uh, council member and mayor wages are paid on a calendar year. And in this calendar year of 20, there's 27 pays. So if you are still gonna get the same amount, it's gonna feel a little bit like a pay cut, but you're still gonna get the same amount in the calendar year. And that will affect um, the salaried employees in fiscal year 21 22. Okay. Thank you for that heads up. Yeah. <laughs> I'll adjust my budget We're pretty Sorry, appropriately. No. <laughs> yeah. no, I, I agree with you, Mr. Mayor. Um, um, as far as the action, you know, what they're supposed to do, as far as the recommendations and such, I mean, I have absolutely no problem with the recommendations whatsoever. <coughs> I'm only speaking for myself, but I didn't get into this for the wages. I didn't look at the wages and said this is what, what's going to get in right. here. It, it's, uh, you know, a, a compensation, but we all do it. And I think if we ever figured out what we get paid per hour, I think we'd all be shocked. Don't do that. So, but uh, I do appreciate your work, Anna, and working with them stuff. And I appreciate the, the uh, comments made by the mayor as well. So I think maybe staff uh, direction back to the committee on what it was originally formed for a purpose and value of the committee itself might be pertinent at this time you know so they can have a, a clear understanding it is hard when you're only meeting every couple of years if we can provide them with some kind of purpose and value statement of some kind to at least let them know exactly what you know needs to be reviewed and where that research can come from I did kind of uh, skim over some previous minutes and it seems like that's always something that they're that they bring up is that um, they need some guidance, but I don't know where that comes from. <laughs> Just a couple of things. I mean, there is a there is a, a state compensation committee as well, and that pattern, you know, in that same regard. Obviously, on the state level, it's it's different than a local level. But I was surprised when I read this that they, in a sense, kind of made a recommendation about what you folks should be doing regarding some of these hot button issues, which I, I don't think that their committee is charged with making recommendations uh, to that. I was a little surprised that it was in the, in the meeting minutes. But I recall in the past they would go through and um, they looked at what committees each particular council member was on, how many meetings there were per year, the average length of those meetings to try to establish. And I remember several years back there were uh, some council members that had attended at a much higher rate and were on much more committees and they were on a meeting basis they were uh, drawing more money for lack of a better term than other council members and i know that was one of their recommendations that to take away the incentive of somebody trying to get on more committees and attend more meetings that we should level the playing field and get uh, each of you on the relatively the same number but also to try to be fair in terms of those committee assignments that you know that those meetings were relatively equal so that the four committees that for instance susan sit on sits on weren't the four that had the longest meetings and so uh you know there was some some talk like that in there so it seemed like it was much more intense uh, or more in-depth of what they looked at uh i don't i don't know what they looked at here because there's just not enough information in there uh and i'm kind of surprised that there's nobody here from the compensation committee to at least 
you know, tell council what they did and how they came up with it. Uh, you might feel that it's fair, you go ahead and vote on it. That's fine, but I think uh, moving forward, uh, it would probably be best that maybe I write a letter on behalf of the city that kind of points out what we're thinking. We can't really direct them what to do because it's not a negotiation thing where if you guys don't like what they come back with, you counter it with, well, how about this? It's not that. But, but if they're asking for information, which it sounds like they are, um, then, then we should probably provide that. Okay. I would, I would appreciate that. Um, and I was here, and I'm not, I don't remember what year it was, so I'm not sure who was here, but I was here when they changed from a smaller salary with meeting compensation to what we have now and it and and we 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 kind of divvied up the committees kind of based yes. on that a yeah, bit just so it was um, and so I, I I certainly appreciate that I would rather it was just kind of straight across the board and we're expected to go to the meetings that were that we've signed up for um, so so I, I, I again I'm, I'm fine with the recommendation and, and if Bill was Bill was going to write him a letter uh, of sorts, like he stated, that that would be great. Okay, I think we'll be all set. If I can just say, I appreciate any committee, no matter who they serve, where they serve for their time. Um, this committee is tasked with um, reviewing our what we do as a, as a council and the committees that we serve on, um, and I appreciate that. I accept their recommendation. I will approve this. It doesn't matter to me what I make. Um, um, but based on the recommendations and the body of um, their minutes, what they've based their decision on is things that the voters should base their decision on, um, not, the, not the compensation committee. I also would like to point out that in the body of this particular committee minutes that um, they're in error. They said that we don't make tough decisions and they specifically mentioned um, um, the retirement board. Last year we did make a tough decision. We did move to a different financial um, investor and we are moving forward. We've made more money for the retirement um, compensate uh, for the retirement committee than, than they ever have in many, many years. So uh, even, even though they referenced that in here, um, we have made tough decisions. Um, so I kind of take offense to what they based their rulings on. And sewer and water, um, I don't think has any place in compensation committee. Um, compensation committee, in my, in my opinion, is based on do I attend my meetings? Um, am I timely? Do, do, do I represent the city well? Am I doing my job? Outside of that, it's up to the voters to decide whether I should sit here or not based on my vote. Um, um, so that's, that's what I have to say about the recommendation this year. And we don't do this to get rich because we're never going to get rich doing this. So, <laughs> so whatever they bring back to us, I want it based on what we do um, and what we're tasked to do on our committees. Because we do make those choices. So we need, uh, I move that we accept the recommendation of the Finance Committee, or I'm sorry, the Compensation the Committee. Because they made the some weights. other. Yeah. Yes, yeah. specifically the weights. Let's make sure we get that. There were other recommendations yeah. in. Second. <coughs> Johnson? Yes. Nielsen? Yes. Nowak? Yes. Walgora? Aye. And Hess? Yes. Motion carried. All right, thank you. I will take a short re recess and um, come back just briefly for a workshop update. Thanks.